Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about your dog. Something I want to talk about today, and it's the concept of where I think that a lot of us are struggling with. Once we get to that stage that it's like, I don't know what to do. You know, I gave them the treats and things aren't working. I gave them some, some, some toys and the things aren't working. I let them try to chase and do stuff and it's just not working. He's not engaging. He's not playing. Like, like what, what, what's happening here? What's going on? There's something that I'm going to try to give at least a recommendation for someone to get a little bit of assistance today with something that's going on that I've just really come to notice. And I come to notice that we get these dogs at who knows what age and what stage, but when the dog first comes to you, the dogs do stuff. And it's a matter of what we do with that dog at that moment that's going to set you up for what we're going to be able to follow through with later on. Because a lot of times these dogs, they have something they got to get done, man. They got some sort of work behind them. These dogs were like bred and made to, to do something. Not to just sleep in the house all day and sit around all day and do nothing all day. They, they got something in them they, they have to do. Some, that's they have way more that they have to do, like an 18-hour work shift type thing. Others, they have like a, a half hour. Like I'm watching this dog now that he's a little terrier mix thing, and he can't run no more than two minutes. Like two minutes, and he's cap, he capped out. But I got other dogs that can, that can do much, much more. And so there's a difference in the variety of what, the, the say, the work level is, but there's some sort of work behind them. And the big thing is we... we we as humans, we, we perceive what we want everyone else, we got to do what everyone does. So the dog needs to walk perfectly next to us, so I'm going to force every dog to do that with me. Not realizing, in reality, what you're stripping from that dog to actually be able to like upgrade that dog's life to be a better dog, as opposed to like stripping it away to make it be worse and worse. Because one thing that th these dogs do, such as a dog that chases, that moves things, that it's just something that I see in a lot of dogs, lots of dogs. Uh, like almost every dog that I've seen still so far, they like to chase some stuff. And it's not always to go and kill it or do something, but it's just to move things out of the way. And the moment that that dog starts pulling on that leash without us really understanding what's going on, we smack that leash back. We do, we do, we do craziness. We, we punish that dog. We flood and treats down that dog's face. The dog's going to now, like, not want to pursue that chase because it's going to think that something bad's going to happen to it. Something's going to happen. You're, you're, you're basically stri stripping that from that dog to be able to think about that's ever option to do in its life again. So pretty much the majority of makeup of what that dog is, is supposed to be doing, we're trying to take that away. And we're not realizing, in reality, most of us, we're not realizing that's what we're doing. We're just thinking we're trying to get the dog to walk to us. But the big thing is we always need to ask, why is the dog pulling? What is it pulling for? Is it pulling to smell something? Is it pulling to eat something? Is it pulling to, to what is it doing? What's happening here? And once we figure out that what's happening here, then we get that dog with that needs with that. And then that dog's going to be basically satisfied with that need. And it doesn't need to do that anymore. So then you'll be able to have a more pleasant uh, uh, situation somewhere else. But it's something that is fascinating because we just don't, we don't, we look at dog and we think like it's just a, a stuffed thing, like it's a robot. It's a nothing. You don't need to do nothing with it. It just needs to walk perfectly with you. And, and, and it's something that I want to be able to hopefully educate more people of understanding like these dogs have purposes. They, they have a design to do something. We as humans, we don't need them anymore. But that doesn't mean that we could just skip up on that because we don't need that anymore. Because I like to sit and watch TV all day, even though I got an Australian Shepherd sitting in my house right now. And that is, that's not normal for them at all. So one thing that starts to happen is you try to, you, you're, at the, you're at that last ditch, you know. Most people that are more likely watching me, and hopefully I'll be able to get the, the opposite side of the crowd in, that you, you, you're getting a dog and you're trying to figure out how to be able to make sure that that dog is going to be able to be a good dog for me. As opposed to my dog, I've done it all. I've done the treats. I've done the pressure. I, I've done, and then my dog, I don't know what's going on here. In that situation, what, it, this is the recommendation that I want to give is you got to get that dog that work. But the main thing is the dog's probably not going to want to do it with you because it's going to be, it's going to be suspicious. You know, you, you're going to bring that flirt pole out. And you, you, this is why a lot of people, you're like, oh, it's not working for my dog. I'm going to say because unfortunately, more than likely, we beat that out of the dog to think that it's able and capable of doing that. That if it tries to pursue it, that you're just going to punish it. It's just, it gets ingrained in the dog's brain. And if the dog's been doing that for years, just understand that like, you're going to have a lot of like, like confidence buildup in that dog to be able to get that dog to want to do what it's supposed to do inside. So a lot of times we just give up. You know, I didn't do it the first time. You got it and it wasn't working. Say, so, oh, I wasn't working. Oh, my dog didn't do it. No, it, it's mainly because because I see this with this boy right here. He, he thinks he's not allowed to chase because of what I was doing with him. But I have given him a little bit more freedom, a little bit more freedom, a little bit more freedom. And now he'll, he'll chase a little thing around. And, 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 and I have to just show him like we do it for a little bit, literally. A second. I'm not joking when I say I thought just whip it. And he's like, whoa, what is that? And then I just, oh, we're done. Leave it alone. Then he realizes, oh, I had to get punished. It's like, okay, now we can move on, move on, and move on. And, and, and it's, 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 it's a challenge because we, we, the dogs want to do that, but the dogs are like suspicious of us. So something that, you know, I, I really want to recommend to everyone is get someone else, some outside source. 
to play with your dog to see if they'll engage with that. Because a lot of times they will, because that other person doesn't have the rules. You know, they don't they don't know them. They're just like, oh, you're new, you're you're new. And I and I've been able to help quite a few people out now with being able to do more with the dogs because I I take the owner away. The dog knows I can't chase, I can't do this with them, but with me, I'm like just straight up. I'm the party, have fun, let's let's do crazy stuff, let's go, let's go be wild type type person. So that dog can finally just get out what it is that they need to get out. And then they actually start engaging. They'll start engaging, engaging. And, and another thing is I like to get, get the owner away from the dog. I want to go somewhere different with the dog so the dog don't even see them and we could just do stuff. And then the dog starts to like get engaged in that. And then once the dog starts to get engaged in that, then the owner can come in and start to get the dog engaged. Go, oh, okay, this setting, this scenario, it's okay. But other scenarios, you know, uh, they're going to still be suspicious of because of what we're trying to do. But the cool thing is once we start to be able to get that dog what it needs, it's not going to be so pushy in the other areas anymore. But, but we got to like get some of these dogs a breakthrough with this. This is something that, you know, I, I, as, as much as I like helping out a lot of people when you're at that I don't know stage, because in reality, that's that's prim, primarily when someone's calling a dog trainer, not that calling them when when things are looking good. It's when something starts to get a little weary. And then this is where things just get messed up where I see it because it gets a little weary. And then we think of I got to go to obedience classes now. And that's actually that's going negative towards actually giving the dog help. Because as soon as you realize my dog has got a lot of energy right now. My dog is just jumping, it's doing, it's going crazy. Obedience is the last thing you should be worrying about with that dog at that moment. If you just at that moment decide, I need to get that dog some serious exercise right now, you'll see a, 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 just an extreme difference in your dog. Because once that dog starts to get that exercise, then you can go to the obedience. But don't go to the obedience first and then think that you're going to do exercise later. You want to, we need to switch that. That's where most people are stumbling. You got your puppy now, and, and you're just running and doing what you're doing, and then one moment you're going to realize this dog, got, this dog has got extra, and the dog is going to need something and something to be able to just like be able to just get that get that out because that's what these dogs are all about. These dogs don't represent lazy sleep all day. Some we're breeding for some today, and and if you're looking for a dog that just lives in an apartment and it just hangs out, I mean, research people what dog that you're about to get. Who cares what it looks like? Care about what it's going to do. Who cares if it's got three legs and one eye? That three-legged, one-eyed dog is probably going to be the best dog ever because it's it's what you needed as opposed to this pretty fancy looking, got all the titles, the parents got all this. You're, you, you're not ready for that. You're just not ready for that. I'm going to straight up say most people are not ready for that. Even most dog trainers. I've seen professional dog trainers get dogs that you're not ready for that yet. You're not, you're not ready to handle that. And it's me with certain of my dogs. I can say I wasn't ready for them when I got them. And I had to build up to be able to get there. But it's, it's something that happens where it's like when you get to that, I need a trainer. The first thing I want you to do is skip the trainer and let me get this dog to do something. Grab you a flirt pole. Grab, grab you a tug toy. They got these ones now that you can stick into the ground. I forget there's a company that makes it. I keep getting the advertising on my Instagram now that they stick it in the ground and it's like a pole that they can pull on. Get something that your dog could just get, get tired in and be able to just make happen. Get your dog into a field. You're nervous. Oh, my goodness. I want my dog around dogs. There's always a time a week that you could get your dog and nothing, nothing else is going to be there. That means you got to get up early or, or stay up later. You just do that once a week so that your dog could just get that out. It could it can make it happen. And once your dog is able to run and, and get all that out, then, yeah, if you want to sit, you want down, you want to do these little tricks, the dog is going to be more, the way I want to say it, is agreeable to do it. You're not going to need treats. You're not going to need pressure. The dog's just going to do it based on the play that you're playing with. And then everything is going to be in a way of being able to get that dog in a better place as opposed to just stripping that dog down to make it worse and worse and worse. This is a lot of what we're doing to these dogs. I don't like that the dog is pulling, so I'm going to this, make the dog do this without understanding why. Because then if, if we knew why and we actually got the why out of the scenario, the dog, I'm telling you, you put the leash on the dog and the dog just stays with you. And, and I, I don't know if I want to, I don't like putting leashes on, especially those dogs, because they just stay with me. They don't challenge it. And they just, they just like, okay, well, you gave me all of this. And they just understand this is just what it is. That's how I've been able to get them to do base down stays. If I tell them to come here and, I, and to stay in the down, that's how. I just literally, especially my border collie, this dude, the dude is, these dogs are so sensitive around their necks when they're in tune with listening to us. But when they're not listening to us because we're not listening to them, they start to stiffen that neck up. That's why some of these dogs, you put that prong on, you give them a snap, and that dog just, it just, it just takes it. it. It takes it. I've seen this from countless amounts of dogs, that they just take that pressure. But they're so sensitive. They're so soft. And that's, that's what you want to keep your dogs to be, sensitive and soft with that neck. It's a, it's a huge form of, of communication. 
That's why when you put the flat collar on, the dog's got a good amount of exercise, the dog's got its good run out, the dog's able to do what it needs to do. And you put a flat collar on the dog, the dog's neck is sensitive, and you're gonna be able to just hold the dog, and the dog's gonna hit the end of it, and he's gonna, oh, I gotta come back now. Without no like pulling and doing no, no, no madness to the dog. The dog is just gonna stop. It's gonna say, oh, that's the boundary, I gotta hang out now. Instead of like just, just grinding and pushing through it. That's when you can just slap the harness on, a dog feels the pressure, and it's like, okay, I'll, I'll back down. But we're not going to be able to get there if we're not giving the dog what that dog needs first. Because that's when the dog is saying, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. Why the heck should I listen to you? And for me to have to listen to you, you better do something crazy. And one crazy method is, it's, it's both one of the both sides here. You give them more leash pressure crazy, or you're giving me more treats crazy. And then the dog can say, you know what? The, the leash pressure is going to be at the end of the day. In reality, just straight up. You're more uh, 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 a guaranteed way. Because... The dog's going to go to the life or death scenario, whereas the treats, that's why the treats work sometimes, because the dog's going to say when it's convenient for me, but when it's not convenient. Like right here, with them playing with the chicken, this, a treat's not going to work to get these dogs out of that. A treat just won't do, well, it won't do it, and it's not going to go anywhere, because the dog's going to say, that is way more, the, the squirrel, the this, the, that is way more valuable than that stupid treat in your hand. And it's, I don't care what you got on you. The dog sees a, a, <laughs> a real chicken over some chicken jerky, he's going to say, real chicken, chicken jerky is meaningless. And it's not even coming down to the food aspect, it's the chase aspect. That chase is, 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 is the most valuable thing. Because I've seen dogs push through e-collars to chase stuff. I've seen it. Not only just videos, but in my face. That you can put it on the, the top thing and the dog just pl plows through it. Because that chase is so powerful to the dogs. But the first thing we do is take that away. We strip that. Nope, you can't. And, and then, because you know, we get scared, we get nervous. You know, we live in a busy world when you're living in the cities and doing what you're doing. I live on a fast street. The street is 60 miles an hour up here. But thankfully, I'm not on the street. I'm for, way far from the street. But this is, it's fast out here. So I get it. When your dog is just running, you're going to get nervous. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, what's happening? That's where you got to get somewhere where it's going to be more, you can be more calm about it. And not even just get that game that, that you can get set up so that dog can be able to get that out. That's what you want to focus on at first. And then in, in, if you're already past that and your dog doesn't want to engage in any of these things, I'm telling you, get, get the, the, my recommendation, if you just can't get no one else, you got to go slow and steady stages each day. I'm talking seconds to allow that dog to just whoop, see it and just like and, and get, get in his brain of like, I want to go because this is the thing, what we do with training, right? We, we get on the dog when it's looking and don't even allow it to look. So before you're getting on the dog before it's even able to look. So if that dog even like does that, it's going to automatically be programmed for months and years of I'm going to get corrected if I go past that. If even doing that, the dog's like, is, was that okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? It's, it's going through this, this thinking process. So you got to just flip it for a second and let the dog just look at it and then allow the dog to realize day after day, wow, he didn't do anything about it that time. Okay, well, maybe I can engage that. But when we're out walking on the trails and going on the street and around the block, you know, I'm still going to be reserved. I'm still going to walk with this person. But maybe here, they're finally doing something to listen to me. But the dog's going to be suspicious because they don't trust you. They don't trust what, what's going on here. So we got to build that back up. So you just flip it and let, it, let the dog look. And then do a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. If you got more time throughout the day, just do that literally like eight times in a day. One, two seconds. Two seconds here I'm talking. Take the toy out. Get it. Take the toy away. Don't just let it hang out. Don't just leave it on the floor in the living room so the dog can see it all the time. But this specific thing is what we play with, what we do. And allow the dog to be able to just see that so you can build up his confidence. You can build it to, to be able to trust you, realizing like, okay, he's not going to do anything here. Because leash or no leash. Any, the dog's been doing that for months. The dog's just going to have it in its brain of like, oh, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. So we, we got to build up their confidence. And once that dog starts to be able to play and it starts to be engaged, then you're going to finally be able to see that dog start to be able to get in that better place. But a lot of times we give up on certain things because the, dog is, the dogs aren't dumb, man. These dogs are smart. They, they learn. They learn. If I do this, they're going to do that. And, and, and they're, they're, they're not just this stupid, silly, pointless little animals. They're very, very smart. And the, the reasons why a, a lot of them aren't doing that chase because they're smart enough to know that they're going to get in trouble if they do it. So we got we got to get them out of that because that's that's why I'm saying like especially if you're at that stage now you've got that like six seven eight nine ten month old dog right now and you notice that dog is starting to like go and do stuff that dog's starting to fixate and starting to look at stuff you need to get that dog working give that dog that work that it needs because most puppies. They don't, they don't do the work yet. Like my border collie, he didn't come out at no eight weeks old. I see some of these people showing these little videos. I mean, moving ducks and stuff. But to get them to do their real work, their real work they're about a year old. Eight, nine, 10, 14, 15, 16 months old before they actually like are moving animals around. 
So they're just pretty much hanging out before then. They're running. They got energy. They're doing what they're doing. But something happens that they start to get like more mature that they're just like now they're like they're, they're stalking stuff. This is stuff I just see with a lot of people with your dogs, man. It's your Australian Shepherds, your cattle dogs, your, your, your German Shepherds, your, all these dogs. It's like like the story is like across the board with a lot of with a lot of y'all with your same dog with these same dogs is everything was like all right and then all of a sudden my dog started fixating on other dogs my dog started fixating on other animals because it's it's ready to work now it's ready to do something but the first thing we do is no slap that dog no or no please no and then give him the treat after treat after treat after treat and not actually giving that dog that that desire it's it's work that it needs if you give that dog it work that it's need at that moment that you realize my dog is fixating on other dogs who do I do. You need to get that dog that game because he's trying to create it for himself at that moment. And dogs are, they're smart, but they're animals. And animals will create animalistic games. And we don't want that. We can't, we can't live with that. And not every dog is like that. If I had, if you had like your border collie trying to come up and play this game with my border, not mine at this point today, but if he was younger. So if you had likewise aged border collies that don't, aren't getting their work, they'll start playing with each other. They'll do it to each other. And it can get, it, it could, at the end of the day, get dangerous in reality because they're, they're going to do some stuff to each other that they're going to get them moving. And, 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 but they'll, they'll be able to make it happen. But that's where it comes in for us to, to intervene, to get into the middle of that, of like saying, I got you. You don't need to go out and do it on your own. I got this for you. I'm going to make it happen for you. Uh, Oreo, I'm going to make it happen for you. You don't, you don't need to like try to create on your own. I'll, I'll be able to give everything that you need. And then that's when the dog, that's when your relationship starts to really get together. It's not a matter of, oh, I see him doing something that I don't like right now and thinking that you're going to punish that out of the dog. You're not going to punish the chase out of the dog. You're going to make it look good for a little while because this is, this is just what happens. You know, this is, this is why for me, the more and more and more I keep working, you got me right out of school doing the stuff, working with these dogs. I was dead set. This, would, this works. But the more and more I get into it, the more and more I'm starting to see, like, what's the, what, what are we dealing with later on? Because it works for a while, but then it doesn't work. And then I need more again. And then I need more again. And then I need more again. And that's the fascinating thing that I'm going to say is interesting about, especially my, my Johnny here that just came up, is I need it more and I need it more. So that's why I went to the e-collar. I need it more. I need it more. And then I noticed today I need less and less and less. I need way less at this moment today. Like, I, so less that I, <laughs> I, I just, like, not say I gave up, but I gave up. I, dudes in the house, I, this dude used to be on max security lockdown. I couldn't trust him with anything, like anything. He was in his kennel. He was in a, a or his crate, one or the other. So I got kennels that are bigger ones that are indoor, outdoor runs. And then I have his crate, but I'd have to have him in something. But if I had him in his kennel, that was the worst one because there was too much space. He could move. He could jump. He could dig. He, he was crazy. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I trust him with nothing in reality, I can say. So then I put him in his crate. But today I put him in the house. I don't even care. I don't even care. I, I don't, th this is the thing that I, I've, I've even upgraded experience of realizing how smart he is that I don't even need to worry about food with him. If it's just him, if I got three other dogs in there all hanging by themselves, they'll, they'll take something off the counter. It's not the counter, it's the coffee table. But I can just, I just leave him in there. I don't even, I don't do, I went way less, way, way less stress, way less everything because I started to allow him to chase. And, and for me, it was, it was hard to, to get him to actually be able to do that because if you would consider it, this dude, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. I was tough. I was tough. I'm not scared of pressure. I grew up tough. I didn't grow up on this, this it's okay and, and go for a timeout. No, I got my whole, everything in the room was taken away. Like every, I, 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 things just weren't, weren't that simple. So I, I wasn't shy to like go to more pressure. And I, I just got tired of that because it would work for a little bit. And then it just stopped working. So then I, I had to build him up to like, you, you could do this, man. You could do this. You can go, you can make it happen. And the more and more I, I gave him what he needs, the more I'm not worried about this dog. This is the, the first dog now, my other dog before I used to have a, a, a staff years ago, that I, she was free in the house the whole time. But this is the first dog in, in a long time that I just, we're good now. And then now the Dalmatian, we're good now. Like I'm not so, but I was struggling because I wasn't giving them that exercise that they needed. Or the Dalmatian, I'm starting off good, good to go because I have a whole different understanding of life today of how to be able to get what I'm going to say is that nice dog, of allowing her to do what it is that she needs to do. That's why at the end of the day, I don't really like pe people walk, showing her too much when we're going for walks. I want her to pull. And someone's going to be confused about that, but I, that's what I'm looking for. We all have different needs and different wants. I want, her to, I want her to pull so hard that she's about to break my neck off when she just takes off and, and starts going. I want that from her. And the main thing is since I'm realizing how to get her to pull, I've learned an extreme amount of information on how to get dogs not to pull. And it doesn't come down to 
uh, uh, giving them pressure to not do it. It's coming down to allowing, giving them what they need, and then they'll stop doing that. Because that's just what Dalmatians and 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 uh, a lot of uh, uh, husky, a lot of these dogs, man, German shepherds. My, my shepherd gets in it sometimes. He'd be pulling pretty good, but he's not. He's not. He's not really built for that. But he he could do that. But that's how I've been able to figure out like how to get them to stop doing that. And that's something that is fantastic because there's a trainer that came at me. I know all these. I've done. All, I'm like, I hear you. Like, what is the point of that? But sometimes certain things can really just help you out in another area. Trying to get a dog to do something like me, creating my dogs to know how to resource guard their food. My great Pyrenees don't come near his bowl. I mean, humans are fine, but another animal don't come near his bowl. I had to create that in him because the chickens were stealing his food. The goats were stealing the cow. Everyone was stealing the dude's food. And he would just sit there like everyone's eating my food. So I had to like build that boy up. How to how to get him to guard that food bowl when his food is there right now. Don't 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 let a baby chick near him. He won't kill it, but he's definitely not going to let you eat his food. And since I've known how to do that, I know how to get the dogs to stop resource guarding food because it's stuff that we're doing to get them to want to do that. And when you stop doing those things, the dog stops acting that way. That's why I'm still going to say today, people, just let your dogs eat their food. Give them their food. Don't put your hands in it, your face in it. Just give them their food. I know how to get a dog to guard that food bowl, and I know how to get them to do it like crazy. And since I know these opposite sides of doing things because I need it for a specific thing of work, I I've been able to, to, to get the dogs to stop doing these things so easily. Because it's just a matter of little things that we need to change. Not, not this, I need to punish the dog to do something, but just change these little things. And up front, it's not punishing the dog for wanting to chase, but change to get them to do that in a safe manner. That's a game with you two together. Because these dogs want to work with us. As much as I can even say, like, my Dalmatian is an independent style of dog, she, they work with, for us. She's not just out running and trying to clear the path and, and do what she do for her own self. No, it's, it's to help me. So we're working in tune with these dogs to do stuff. We don't just put a guard animal out there because even like Pyrenees, even the ones that are working in where like a remote areas in Ireland and Scotland and all that that are watching flocks, they're watching the flocks for us. They're not watching it for themselves. These dogs are all working for us. We're the ones that they're looking for. So when we're doing the work together, that's what I'm telling you just makes the dogs like is so much better with me, so much better with you. My Border Collie is getting so much better with me because of these silly games I play with this flirt pole now. He, like it's it, it 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 it's cool. It's very fascinating to be able to see. But it's a matter of me allowing him to do that, knowing that you can do this. I mean, he already knows first. He's got the freedom to to move and do what he needs to do. And even to the point to today, he's got the ultimate freedom of, especially when it's just me and him. He can move anytime. I know he's doing what's right. He knows what we need to do. He knows what needs to get happen. He knows when the cows are pounding me when I'm trying to build a fence, and he'll keep them away without me having to say a single word. He knows when the chickens are all in my business. He gets them out. To, he, he, he knows how to do it all because it's just what's inside of him to be able to do. And it was for me to, like, get that out of him. Like, do it. Do it. I see what's going on with you, man. Because there was a shift that happened in him, a shift that happened in my German Shepherd. I saw it one day where he's just, like, he, he just transformed. He was just like in La La Land, in La La Land. All these dogs, they don't, they, don't, they don't mature as fast as what I think a lot of what we're trying to say that they do. It takes them a lot for them to, like, really just, just – be an I guess you could put it like in, a, in an adult way but an adult because that's the same same thing I say with us as humans you know they're gonna slap like a, a date on that when you're 18 you're an adult that's not true. <laughs> straight up man that's not true you know that that may be what society wants to put on that we could say it society wants to put on a 15 month old dog that's now an adult but that don't mean that that's what that dog is that dog is still it's a puppy still or not even if it's a puppy it's still like in its its learning stages because when you really talk to, like, older people, when, when, is an, when does someone become an adult? You know, someone will say for a man, like, my age, 35, 37, 38 years old, that's when you're finally, like, able to do stuff. But before that, you're still doing foolish boy stuff. And, and for girls, you could say, girls are a lot sooner than dudes. But, uh, but still, like, mid-20s, uh, 27, 28, 30, 25 to 30, that's when the time that you're finally starting to become a woman. But our society says 18. In some places, it says it's 16. In some places, it's, it's like 12 or 14. And, and just because we slap that number don't mean that's what it is. Because stuff starts to happen. That, that's the main thing that I want a lot of us to really understand is when that dog has that shift that it's like, I got to do my work now. You know, I've done the play stuff. I've hung out. Now I, I got to do what I got to do. We got to give them what they need to do. Some of them, it is that hunt. And, and I'm, doing, I'm, I'm working overtime right now and figuring out how to be able to create little things to be able to get this hunt going. And I got a dog with me right now, and I got some stuff with me right now to start, start just playing around to be able to make something. You know, I've got nothing of dog training that I want to sell, but I'll definitely sell you some dog training props 
so that you can be able to play these games with your dogs to give your dog what it needs. If your dog wants to, to, to hunt and go and sniff out and find and search and find something to be able to find something to be able to actually have something, I'm, I'm working on that so that these dogs can be fulfilled. Because that's what all of my dogs across the board have is fulfillment because I give them what they need. But at the end of the day, some of us, we just have the wrong dog. And just because you have the wrong dog shouldn't mean that we, we got to give up on that dog. It just means that we got to do a little bit extra now. And that little bit extra is going to have to take you to just be able to understand what that specific dog is looking for. If you got a dog that has this high prey drive that's chasing, that does all this, it's unfortunate. It's got to do that. Because if you just suppress it, suppress it, suppress it, it just it gets inside of it. And then something happens later on that it, it has to let that out. And when it lets it out later on, it's that's when things get wild. That's when it's the, oh, he, putting teeth on, always guarding this, always this. Th those are the things that are way more dangerous than a dog chasing. Because at the end of the day, I could say a dog that's chasing up front and you're scared because it, you get hit by a car, you know, the dog took the hit. But later on when the things get dangerous, it's now the kid. Now it's the, it's us. Now it's another dog. Now it's, it's, it's more than just the, the animal itself being in a dangerous situation. Now everything around that animal is in a dangerous situation because we're just suppressing everything about that. For some reason, we're just not talking about this. We're just saying, oh, the dog is, is wanting to pull and it wants to chase, so just strip that from the dog. You know, it'll, it'll listen to you. And, and I just, I, I wanna see it. And this is where some of the e-collar stuff I see, it works. And, and, and I've seen it on, on a dog I got right now, it works. We're, we're not having to like layer more and more and more because they get it to put it on the dog to be able to get it to chase, as opposed to most people are trying to put it on the dog to get it not to do that anymore. So that's, that's the main thing is why I, I'm not really against a lot of the equipment because a lot of the stuff, it's, it, it was created for a purpose. And in reality, a knee collar is created to convince the dogs to chase, to give them more, to be able to chase more and harder and get just dig deep with it. It wasn't a tool to get the dogs to stop, to get the dogs to walk a perfect heel, to get the dogs to sit, to get the dogs to down, to get the dogs to place. That's not what that tool was created for. If we use the tools of what they were created for, you would see your dog get in a better place. Because a lot of these hunting dogs before, granted, they're not really pet dogs. And another thing is that I can put on that as well. They're not really pet dogs. They're not living in the house and hanging out dogs, but some turn into be. But we're allowing them to be able to chase it. That's why we have that equipment on that dog. We want the dog to go take off at the deer. I mean, Garmin makes this tracking one. It's got these like 12 mile radius things where they could, they could see them on it. It's to go hunt bears, mountain lions, and go hunt some stuff to go let the dogs out and go get it. And when they could see on the map that the dog is headed off course, they could give that dog a little correction to get it back on course to do what it needs to do. Because it could see what it's fooling around doing. Get, it, get back on my hunt, man. That's what this stuff is made for. It's not made to get your dog to be able to uh, uh, walk a perfect heel with you. Because if, if, you're, if you're relying on only to do that, you're stripping the dog from being able to do what the dog needs to do. And that's why for me, you know, I don't want to, I could still say you don't need it. But at the end of the day, I see why it's needed. And, and I'm going to say that about 99% of people don't need it. You, it. It could benefit some for a specific thing, but you don't need it. And at the end of the day, for me, still, I'm, I, I, I guess, a slip leash, a choker collar. I could see it. I could see the need for it. I understand it. But I don't need it to get what I need from the dog anymore. And the same with the prong collar. I get it. I understand it. That tool specifically, I, I totally understand the because I've done all the research of where it came from, why it was made. I get it. I've seen it do what it's supposed to do is activate the dog. It's supposed to activate the dog to get the dog like more turned on to like want to go at the end of the day, attack more, to get it to bite more, to get it to go pursue, to get it to chase harder. It's meant to like create them to do it more, not to do it less. It, it brings up the frustrations to just get the dog like, ah, I want to explode and want to go. That's what the, that, that piece of equipment was created to do. And we're trying to put that on to, to use it for the opposite effect. Oh, dog is pulling. Let me get it to get the dog come back. And then you wonder why the dog is still doing it because we're actually explaining to the dog to keep doing that. And we're using it backwards. And that's why a lot of where we're messing up because that's what we're constantly doing with these dogs. Everything backwards. We see my dog is fixated on a dog and I want to punish my dog for doing that. As opposed to giving that dog that outlet that it, it's, it's capable of being able to do that. So it doesn't need to worry about a dog. Dog has no desire to, my border collie, I've never seen one working fixate on another dog and want to like go and attack the dog. No, they look at a chicken, they look at a goat, they look at a sheep, they look at a cow, they fixate on those animals. But when they don't have that, and they're not getting any outlet at all, that's what they got to do. Anything that moves. That's why a lot of you got the dogs that are chasing anything that moves, leaves, anything that moves. My goodness, they're crazy because they're not getting any, any of the outlet. They need to get that outlet before we start to correct them for that out, before wanting to express that outlet so that that dog will go all out. That's why I, I enjoy being able to play 
with my border collie doing that stuff because it's fun to see him go all out because he knows he can, he can, he, he can, he can do what he do, man. He can go all out. No slowing down. No just, just full game because he's never said, been told not to do so. And that's what we want our dogs to be able to do, to be able to give them the, the full experience of being able to calm down and relax is what they need inside. And what they need inside is that game, is that work, is that, that the only two words I want to use that, but it's just work at the end of the day. It is what it is. They need it. They absolutely have to have it. And when they get that, the dog is now, okay, you want to put obedience on it? Now we can do that. But don't try to mix the two. Don't try to do one before the other. You got to do the exercise up front, get the dog its fulfillment, get the dog its work. I'm not going to say exercise. It's the work that that dog needs. Do that first and then do your obedience in the middle of the exercise. And then you're going to have a well-rounded dog that's going to do these little things that you want. This is stuff that I do with my dogs. I tell them to wait and they wait. I can tell them to sit and they sit. I can tell them, I can tell them all these things, but it doesn't turn into anything hostile because it was just based out of our work that we're doing together. So it's not like anything extra. And, and I'm not asking them to do things in a weird foreign stance. And that's why I just don't like to just say the word sit just because it's, we're going to do something with this. And the dog's like, okay, I'll do it without it being any kind of pushback as opposed to trying to put on a show for somebody. And the dogs know that. And that's when you get a little pushback from that. But the main thing is if you got that dog now, the young dog, because if, if we just understand this up front, as soon as I see that my dog is starting to go crazy and we understand that game to give that dog as opposed to trying to correct everything out of that dog at first, you're not going to need anything more later on, and you're going to need less and less exercise. Because every time I keep taking someone else's dog, I keep realizing my, my dogs are extreme the same way that I am. The same way I'm out here trying to run a 100-mile race in a couple of years is how my dogs function, except for this one. He, he hang out. But all my dogs, all the dogs I work with turn into this dog because that's what they are is Johnny Man here. They're pet dogs is the most that I work with. They just need a little bit of that work. But when they're younger, of course, they're going to need a little bit more because they're younger. They're going to have more pep in their step. But they're not, they're not capable of doing no 18-hour work shift. They're, 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 they're off duty. Most dogs are, <laughs> unfortunately, they're, they're out of shape, man. They're overweight. They're, they're, they're so comfortable. They're so relaxed. The concept of work is, isn't even in them so because they haven't been doing it. So it, it's, they don't need much, but they need something. And that something is going to be able to calm that dog down. But that something is 15 minutes a day of getting that dog on the hunt to find something, to search something out. That's what that dog needs to be able to be a nice dog. That's, that's what you should focus your time on, as opposed to my dog is pulling because it wants to hunt, so I'm going to pull that dog back until it can't do it no more. You're, you're setting up for disaster. Now you're going to destroy your relationship, and you're never even going to build one with that dog because it's not going to trust you. And if the dog don't trust you, it's not even going to care about coming to the point of wanting to listen to respect you. It's just it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it, it, it be crazy. It's going to be wild. And that's something that I, I've realized, you know. Someone might say is, I'm just watching, because there's a lot of trainers out here that are like this. They've never done the techniques. They've never been in it. They've never put an e-collar double box. <laughs> Going crazy, people. I put two on dogs to get them to get down, because I need you to get down. I have dang near choked dogs out to the point that I'm not sure the dude's even going to be living right now to get the dog to figure out how to stop fighting with another dog. I've done some crazy stuff, and I was realizing that that crazy stuff wasn't working. I've, done, I've tried it all. I've done crazy stuff to this dog right here. That, that's why I'm way more lenient with him. And, 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 and I think that today he, he understands that. So that, that's why he's just like, we're just hanging out, dude. We're, we're chill. Because it, it, went, it, it went too far and things went too much. But it wasn't helping me out at all. It was making everything worse and worse and worse. And when I finally was just like, Johnny, what do you need? Forget what I need right now. Forget what I'm trying to force you to do right now. What do you need? And then I started noticing things get better and better. And someone would say, you know, that your dog is pushing you around. No, my dog is just wanting what it needs. It's not trying to get more than that. It just wants that simple thing that's in its DNA genetic makeup, that it is inside. It has to do this. It's like me to, I don't know what we as human beings absolutely have to do to be able to live on this planet, but there's some stuff that we as well have to do. And if we don't do it, you're gonna be struggling your whole life. And for me, I just gotta end it right here and say thank you. And just my last final thought is, this is something that we should be also focusing on with raising kids and having employees and doing anything like that. See what they're good at and start to really just let them flourish in that, push them harder in that, allow them to just, just really do that. And that's what a true good leader is. A leader is going to be able to get that person, that thing to be able to be better at what it's good at. And then when it's better at what it's good at, you don't, you don't have to fight with it. You don't have to bigger, bigger with it. You can just let them do what they do. You could guide them with what, where, where you want them to go with that, and they're going to do really, really well at that. 
But if we look at them and say, oh, you like to dance, and you just tell them, no, you can't do that, you're going to be button heads. You're going to be button heads. You're going to be button heads a lot. You're going to try to tell that dog that likes to chase uh, just to uh, uh, clear the land. Some of these dogs, <laughs> I mean, some of y'all, at the end of the day, I'm going to say something as well to help someone out. A lot of these dogs, you got a dog that can do some pretty good work, you can make money with them. And a lot of y'all like these border collies and these Australian shepherds, you can be making money with them because golf courses will pay you to remove the ducks and to remove the birds to get them off the land. And if you got a dog that knows how to clear the land and you get that dog good enough to be able to do that, you could be for hire and make a couple thousand bucks in a day. You know, that might not be a lot to some people, but give me two or three thousand bucks for two or three hours worth of work. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I don't know about you, but I signed my dog up to be able to do such a thing. And this need is out here. And, and even if they, they don't realize the need, you could go to someone and say, hey, I got something to be able to help you out with. You got problems with these? I, I can clear the land for you, at least for the day to get them out. And then if they come back, you know, whatever. But we could do that. And if we do that day after day after day, they're, they're going to find a new place to go. And, 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 and in reality, a lot of where we could say invasive, invasive species shouldn't be. We, 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 we're doing a, a service to the land to get some of these things out of here. There's some stuff that, yeah, we should leave it alone. But a lot of it, we, we need to get the heck out of and you could be for service for someone to be able to help them out with a need that they need. And, and, and not allowing your dog to be able to express who it is. You, 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 you're, I'm telling you, that's why a lot of this dog train stuff isn't working for a lot of people. For some people it is. Because we're doing it the right way, I'm going to say. We're giving the dog the freedom to be able to chase. We're giving the dog the freedom to be able to go and do what it needs to do. As opposed to stripping everything away from that dog. Because I, I listen to some trainers and that's, that's their go-to. I want you to get the freedom so that the dog can be able to run and, and go and do it. But the thing is, it's up to the owner, you, to like even be comfortable with doing that. Because even with an e-collar on your dog, a lot of y'all still don't let your dogs chase anything. Because you're still like, you're, you're super nervous, knowing that you had that backup security just in case, but you still don't let them do it. That's why you're button heads. Because a dog has it inside it has to do. And when you give it to them, you're, you're smooth sailing. Because a dog wants to do it with you. It don't want to do it on its own.